what sin do you struggle with the most? Is it anger? Maybe it's greed or lying, or it could possibly be simply selfishness. The reality is that we all struggle from time to time with the sin nature and with the kingdom of darkness that's always there to tempt us and try to lure us into some type of sinful behavior. Today, I'm going to talk about four ways that we can overcome temptation and the sinful nature. And this is based on the advice and the wisdom, I should say, that Paul gives us in Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 through 9. Put to death, therefore, your members which are on the earth, sexual immorality, uncleanness, depraved passion, evil desires, and covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake the wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience. You also once walked in those when you lived in them, but now you also put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and shameful speaking out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his doings. The first way to overcome temptation and the sin nature is to ask the Holy Spirit to show us, to reveal to us areas where we're vulnerable. Let's follow the example of King David. He said this in Psalm 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Now that's out of the web version, but think about what King David is asking God to do. He's asking for the Holy Spirit to search him and to reveal to him any way that is displeasing to God. And if we want to overcome temptation and the sinful nature, that's what we need to do. We need to ask the Holy Spirit to show us, to reveal to us areas where the sinful nature maybe is hiding or is concealed and we need to draw that out, expose it, so that we can deal with it. The second way to overcome temptation and the sin nature is to understand what God's opinion is. So the best way to do this is really to study the Scripture, to get into the Word of God and figure out what does the Bible say. How much do you really know about God, about His character, His nature, his likes and his dislikes. When we take the step of figuring out what God likes and sometimes what he dislikes, that gives us an advantage against temptation and the sin nature. We need to study the scripture with a simple question in mind. What is God's opinion? And when we start looking at the scripture to figure out what is God's opinion, on any number of subjects, then we get insight into what pleases him, what doesn't please him, and how I can line myself up with what pleases him. If we want to develop a deeper walk with the Lord and have a more intimate relationship with him, knowing his opinions about things is really a key. I mean, what friend do you have or spouse or girlfriend, boyfriend do you have that you don't know their opinions about things. In fact, the deeper that relationship goes, the more we learn about their opinions on all kinds of things. What do they like to eat? What do they like to do? What do they not like? What irritates them? See, relationships are based on learning the other person, what they like, dislike, and it's the same with our relationship with God. If we want to grow deeper with Him, then we need to learn his opinions. And the Bible is the best and main way that we do that. Knowing God's opinion shines a bright light on the kingdom of darkness and the deceptions that they try to uh, pull over on us and, and ways that they try to pull us into sin. But it also shines a bright light on us and our sinful desires and the sin nature which so easily tries to entangle us. God's opinion through the Word of God 
shines a bright light and helps us walk in that light. The third way to overcome temptation and the sinful nature is to reject the attitudes, behaviors, actions that are displeasing to our Heavenly Father. Now, we know the Holy Spirit will help us to do that. The Holy Spirit will reveal things to us that we are doing that are displeasing if we ask Him. But we have to take the step of rejecting those things, of putting them aside, putting that desire to death, and adopting that thing that is new, that the Holy Spirit wants us to do, that is a good, a godly thing. I want to stress a point here because I see this inside the body of Christ as well as the world. The culture around us is focused on management. We don't need to manage sin. We need to focus on transformation. And you don't have the transformation process if you're trying to manage sin. So think about it. We are to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. That means that we have to push out those old things. We have to reject those old attitudes, behaviors. We have to tear down the strongholds. We have to change our belief system so that we can adopt those things which are good and godly. We can't manage our sin. We can't l manage lying or manage stealing or manage lust or manage greed. It isn't about that. It's about rejecting those things so that we can find transformation through the Word of God, through the Holy Spirit, God giving us those things which are new. So let's get past this management mentality and let's really focus on transformation, rejecting the ungodly and receiving the godly. That will help us overcome temptation and the sinful nature. Hey, if you're enjoying this study through the book of Colossians, then share it with a friend. Give them a copy of the video or the link to the video and ask them to check it out. The fourth way to overcome temptation and the sinful nature is to seek the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is a revolutionary concept if you can grab this, because believers all the time, we want to seek the power of the Holy Spirit to do some miraculous thing, to cast out demons, to raise the dead, to do all this incredible stuff. And there is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with being used by God in miraculous ways and to have the power of the Holy Spirit at work in us like that. But we would be far better off if we sought the power of God to overcome temptation and the sinful nature which is constantly attacking us. When we do that, then we're entering a place of transformation and sanctification. And that is a higher priority to God than you serving or you doing something for Him. He is interested in our transformation and our sanctification. Our passage for next week is Colossians 3, 10 through 15. And I have a couple of questions for you for next week. The first question is, what does Paul say we should put on in these verses? And question two, why do we need to put these things on? Thanks for joining me today. I just pray that you're blessed in the name of Jesus.